welcome to another session with my little tangerine tiger baby tabby cat that I discussed last time but today we'll find out a little bit more about what this little beast can do um, I'm very confident that it will run fast I'm not quite too confident now that the RF laser will be able to keep up with this but we will find out so the first thing we've got to do is to jump into the vendor settings and oh no the first thing I've got to do is to apologize to who knows how many people it's been a hectic couple of weeks trying to get the new parts of this shipped to different people now lots of people have wanted parts many different combinations of parts and look, I've told you before I've only got two grey cells left and sometimes things slip down between those grey cells so if you happen to be one of the people that I have somehow appear to have ignored please excuse me will you write again and remind me that hey I have ignored you and B you're still interested in something and I will deal with it because the rush is now more or less over and I think I can concentrate on just one or two things at a time now if you've ordered a Mark II head you will require some of these targets to help you set up with now quite a few people I think most people I've sent a copy of the targets to even those people sometimes with a Mark I head which these won't fit so if you have not got any of these targets by the time you come to use your Mark II head please contact me again and I will send you the file so you can make some apologies over let's get back to the current project the primary essence of this machine is to be an engraving machine a fast engraving machine we don't need speed for cutting we only need speed for engraving so what I've got on here I've got my compound lens so that I can get the thinnest possible line and we're going to do a very simple test on here to start with to see how the machine is configured from the factory so I've just set that up to about 11.2 I have not got any extraction on at the moment because we're not going to produce huge amounts of smoke. I've got the power on here set to 25 kilohertz, 100% power. There's no pulsing involved at all. This is exactly like a glass tube laser now, but 30 watts. Now, you can see what's happening. We've got a large amount of over travel at the end of the stroke. Now how much is that over travel? Well let me do another one and I'll show you what I'm going to do to measure that over travel. I've just got a drill here which I'm going to lay in the bearing track. I'm running the program at 500 millimeters a second. That's the top speed that has been allowed on this machine and I'll show you where that's been allowed um, in a few moments. So what I'm going to do is gently push that And if you look carefully you'll see just there that there's an oil mark where the wiper has pushed the oil to exactly that place there where my drill is I'm going to move very gently onto that drill and there we go so now if I put another pulse down there that will tell me what the over travel was between the end of the program and that pulse mark so there's our starting reference, 500 millimetres a second with a 28 millimetre over travel. Quite a few of you guys will be fairly mm, reluctant to go in and mess around with your vendor settings. But let me put your mind at rest. File, vendor settings. When you go into vendor settings, the first thing you need to do is press read. And it will read the information back from the machine into the PC. Now when we took a, take a look at the maximum speed that's been set from the factory, it says 500 millimetres a second. Do you know what? I'm going to change that to 2,000 millimetres a second. You're joking, surely. You're joking. Well, this is only a safety limit. It just means that when I go elsewhere in the programme and ask for 2,500, it won't ever do 2,500, it'll only ever do 2,000 millimetres a second. 
Okay, so it, all that does is to set a safety limit. It doesn't control the machine. Now, what else can we change in here? Right, acceleration. Now, at the moment, the acceleration is set to 5,000. I'm going to change that to 40,000. 40,000. And right. And we've only messed around with the x-axis at the moment. Yeah, while we're in here, let's just have a look at the y-axis doing. The y-axis is set to 400 millimeters a second. Well, we're taking a bit of weight off the x-axis, so maybe I'll reset that to 500. I'm not going to go too high on the, on the y-axis because the y-axis is quite a lot heavier. The acceleration on there is only set to 1500. That's ridiculous. So I'm going to set that to something like about 5000. So we're right. So we've just all we've done is really allowed the machine now, if we want, to run faster. So we can exit from here and now we can go and reset things as we need them in the user tab. The first thing we have to do again when we get in here is to read and you can see the maximum acceleration in here at the moment is set to 3000. We're going to put that up to 20,000. Remember 3000 to 20,000. 20,000. If I've exceeded the capability of the stepper motor to accelerate that fast, you will hear it and see it. It's not dangerous, so don't get worried. Run exactly the same program at 500 millimeters a second, but this time the acceleration factor has gone from three to 20. Move on to my drill and pulse. Demonstrated this before, but now you can clearly see the effect of acceleration. We had 25, 28 millimeters it took to slow down, stop, turn round, and come back to do a scan. Look at the relationship between the distance of over travel and the distance of actual scanning. It takes longer to slow down and turn round than it does to actually do the scan line itself. And that was done with a 3,000 millimeters per second per second acceleration. This is the same program with 20,000 millimeters per second per second. Now, I'm not gonna push it too much further than that because I'm gonna now do something significantly different. I'm gonna push the speed up to 1,000 and see whether or not at a thousand millimeters a second what the effect is with 20,000 millimeters a second a second acceleration. Okay so here we are at a thousand millimeters a second and I'm going to now run this with an acceleration of 30,000 millimeters a second a second. Yeah, I can see where it is. It's just there. So we've gone from 31 to 23 now. And the question is, how much further can we go with the acceleration? Shall we try 40,000? Let's be silly, shall we? 40,000. You've got to remember that I've lightened this head considerably. I've taken all the load off of here and all we've got is just this one piece of pipe that's offering some sort of resistance in that direction. The only mass that we've got is this head here. The belt, the inertia of the wheels, is negligible in relation to the mass of the head. And we'll see what happens at 40,000 millimeters a second per second. Maybe it will lose steps now. OMG. Gone down to about 20. So now, where do we push it to? Have you ever seen this machine run anywhere near 1500 millimeters a second? Let's give it a try, shall we? Now, I am expecting step loss this time because I'm asking it to do something pretty phenomenal. 1500 millimeters a second, 40,000 acceleration. I should just pause the cycle if it starts to go bonkers. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> 
you can't mistake when it's losing steps. So now it's lost its zero and we shall have to now reset the machine. So we just do a reset because it needs to know where zero is. We'll be a little bit more um, gentle with the machine. Should we? Should we take it to 1200? It's happy at 1200. Okay, 1300 millimeters a second. Okay, so let's take a look at those numbers and see what is a reasonable trade-off for us. We get 23 millimeter over travel doing a thousand millimeters a second with a 30,000 acceleration. If we increase that to 40,000, we can reduce it from 23 to 20. I think that's about the best that we found, to be honest. A thousand millimeters a second. We start going up to 1200 millimeters a second, which is a faster speed, but we get more over travel. So I don't think there's a net gain there in terms of cycle time. Bear in mind, this is the same program. This is 500 millimeters a second. This is 1,000 millimeters a second. And this is 1,300 millimeters a second. Do you know there's anything quite significant that's happened? The power is the same. The focus is the same. Acceleration has no effect on the color that you see on the pattern. This absolutely confirms what I was telling you last time when we were talking about speed being the major controlling factor. You do not have any control of power on this machine. To get any reasonable colour, we can forget 1300, which we could run at. We can even forget 1000. We've run out of puff beyond 500. We just don't have the power to burn this wood, even with this very, very sharp lens. Let's take a look at these under the microscope. Now, what we've got here is a 0.1 wide reference line. So I think you'll probably see that these lines here at 500 millimeters a second are pretty close to 0.1, because we're going in quite deep and we're going slow so the lower power part of the beam, the Gaussian shape of the beam, is getting a chance to scorch rather than burn. Okay, now that's at 500 millimeters a second. Let's move up to 1,000 millimeters a second and see what the difference is. We're pretty close to 0.1. You'll notice how, relatively speaking, light it is. Let's go up to 1,300 millimeters a second. Now, we're going so fast but look how faint they are. We're distributing the power so thinly, we're sharing that power, that we haven't got any depth of cut there. There's nothing I can do to increase the power because I'm running at 100% power already. I'm afraid that on hardboard, it's very difficult to see what's actually going on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change to a piece of card and I hope that you'll see the difference on a piece of white car. Just set the focus to 11. 0.2. And we run the same thing again. And just beside that, I'll run 100%. There is a slight difference between 100% and 50%. But let's go and look at it under the microscope because maybe your eye is actually not seeing it quite correctly. Well, there they are side by side. That's 50% and that's 100%. Not a lot of difference. If I change this from 25,000 to 1,000. Okay, now we do exactly the same test again. Now we're running slowly, you can see the 50-50 pulses, 50% 50 on, 50% off. But look at the colour of the pulse. We've changed the frequency and all we've done is actually change 
the rate at which the pulses are going down. We compare that with 50% at 25 kilohertz, not a lot of difference. At 100% there is no difference regardless of the frequency. They're switched on 100% of the time and running 30 watts at 1300 millimeters a second. The only reason we're getting a change of color is because of the speed. So let's back that speed off from 1300 to 500. We're still on 50-50 remember, still on slow speed. The only thing that we change is the speed. So that is 500 millimeters a second. Let's do it at 100% and compare that at this end. I don't think we really need any further proof than that. I mean, we can go and look at this under the microscope and it will, it will be black, like that. But look, as we get faster, they are all approximately the same colour. The big change is when we change the speed. This is 1 kilohertz, this is 25 kilohertz. So the kilohertz has no effect. 50%, 100%, 50%, 100%. There is no difference. So what I've just proved is the theory that we talked about last time. This machine operates on a very simple, what they call PWM principle. It has a square wave, which is the pulse width modulation wave that looks like that. That frequency can range anything from zero, so I'm told, to 25,000 hertz cycles a second. Now, to make life easy for myself, I've written a very simple little program here so we can just instantly get the results. At a frequency of 25,000 hertz, the pulse length, one cycle, is 40 microseconds. And if we use 50% power, we've got 20 microseconds of on power and 20 microseconds of off power. If this is a 25,000 kilohertz signal, that's one cycle, and it takes 40 microseconds. Now, this laser only operates at one power, 30 watts. Whatever the power is, that's all you get. In this mode of operation, there is no change to the power at all. The power is always 30 watts. And those 30 watts can either be on or off. At the moment, this is set here to be 50% power on and 50% power off. And that's what those patterns were that you saw, the dashes. On, dash, on, dash, on. If we move it slow enough, the speed is fast enough so that we can actually see these on-off pulses. But Every one of those pulses is 30 watts. Now we spoke last time about damaging material. Here's our piece of material. When we've got 30 watts on, we can damage the material by that amount. And those are the dashes that you've seen. The only thing is, those dashes are not dependent upon power. Those dashes are dependent upon time. Now, we can make the dashes longer or shorter by changing the percent power. So the percent power is not really changing the power at all. It's changing the average power because if I draw a line through here, like that, I've got 50% more power there than I have there. So that 50% and that 50% join up, and we've got on average 15 watts. 
not 30 watts. We've got 30 watts in a pulse, but on average, we've got 15 watts. But we're not using average watts to drill this channel. We're making this pit here with 30 watts. There is nothing here to make a pit, so there won't be any pit. And this is the point I'm really trying to get over to you and have proved today that the depth of this cut here is dependent upon speed. We've got a constant power that's on. And if it's constant, we shall get a constant depth of cut. The only thing that can change that cut is either the power, which we can't change because it's fixed, or the speed. So if we run over that pit at twice the speed, we'll get half the depth of cut. And that's why at 500 millimeters a second, we get a cut like that. And at 1300 millimeters a second, we get a cut like that. A different depth, a different color. So the color of the cut, the amount that you burn, has got nothing to do with power. We're stuck with 30 watts. If we start sharing it out, we get less and less color. And we share it out by running faster. It's exactly like passing your hand over a candle flame. The faster you pass it over, the less it will hurt. The faster you pass it over, the less it will damage. So that means that we've got to run this machine slowly to get color. And that seems to defeat the object of having a fast machine. Yes, I've shown you, the machine can run very fast, but we're not gonna get any benefit from running fast. This is not rocket science, this is fact. And the big boys are either using a more powerful laser to get their results, they're certainly not using a 30 watt laser because we're not gonna be able to run at 1300 millimeters a second, get a decent color. Maybe if we had 60 watts, we might be able to do it. I think that's the main reason why I'm saying this is less of a tiger and more of a tabby cat. Yeah, we can do something, but we're gonna to have to do it at that sort of speed, which is not much different to what we could do with the standard CO2 glass tube machine. But this is just an initial disappointment, which I theorized last time, proved this time, and I'm reinforcing yet again the reason why it's not as dramatic as I thought it might be. The confusing issue is color comes with speed and not with percent power. That doesn't work. That's about as much as I've got patience for today. I've got to go away and have a think about where we go next. So until the next time, thank you very much and I'll catch up with you then.